So everyone, welcome to this video. I'm really pleased that we have Manish and Gurdain with us. So the inspiration for this guitar course was from a concert that we played together in Rag Jog. And luckily this concert was pretty well filmed and recorded. So I had all these memories of special moments in the concert. And when I looked back at the footage, it really it confirmed my memory that there were some really interesting things, particularly that Manish played in the concert. And I was kind of just about half grabbing hold of some of these um, special Tihai rhythms that he was playing in the concert. I was kind of hot on his heels trying to play along with some of these phrases. Um, but looking back at the footage, I thought this is really special. We really need to get this on the guitar and notate what he's doing, try to work out the rhythms behind it, get Manish to help us. Um, so that's turned into a complete breakdown and also an introduction to Rag Jog because you need to understand the melodic framework that's behind all of these phrases and how to improvise leading up to these special to high rhythms. And then Gurdain, our tabla player, has joined us to do fantastic accompaniment. So when you're listening to the examples from the course, you're, you're really hearing the full treatment, how the tabla would play along with these rhythms. And you also hear the vocal side of it being um, pronounced. So there's the vocal side synchronized with the tihai and Gurdain is also reciting the tabla speak, the, the bowls of the tabla drum. So you're really getting a complete experience of the substructures that are underneath these wonderful things that you hear in a performance situation. And just really pleased to fully launch that course now. So I thought it'd be nice to talk to the guys about it a bit more. So um, Manesh, it, it was wonderful <clears throat> to have your involvement and particularly to interview you to talk about you know, we, we did a little conversation. Oh, yes, yes, at your place, yes. Yeah, because I was yeah. really interested to see what you would say when I asked you um, about the different things that you played in the concert. And I, I was amazed that when I asked you about each different um, thing that you played, you knew immediately off the top of your head what the mathematical kind of formulas were. Yeah. Uh, you, you, you could explain to me just at the drop of a hat how the subdivisions were working, what the rests were, where exactly it came in. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, surprisingly, when, when, uh, when you play, you don't really kind of break it down. Though I knew uh, the subdivisions and divisions and everything, but actually after, after you started analyzing it, it occurred to me more, uh, you know, that for, for me, Playing comes simple, but just breaking down and analyzing it becomes very difficult. So, so through the course, when I was watching this, and I sometimes you realize that okay, now this is how it is. Though you can play it because playing really comes easy to you. But uh, yeah, but then really uh, breaking it down and uh, analyzing things, which really the course does it so well that it doesn't really leave any any element. It's got a picture element, it's got, uh, you know, it's got notations, it's got sound, it's got tablas, it's got close-ups of every hand. So it's like when you see that, it's like, it's, it's fantastic. So uh, yeah, that's what, I mean, I, I think it's very fascinating to see the entire thing being broken down in such a beautiful way. Yeah, I mean, it, it, was, it was, the most challenging thing was to notate what you did. Um, in in the Valambit speed, um, yeah. Because the the thing that's so difficult about Valambit um, is that when you're playing fast, you're using what we call in Western music thirty second notes. Yeah. Um, so that that's eight eight notes in one beat. So like takademi 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 takademi. Yeah. Um, and we call that 30 second notes because if you're in a bar of four, four, there would be 32 of them in, in, right. in, in one bar. Yeah. Um, and there were times where I even had to do um, what we call a, a dotted 30 second, which mm -hmm. means that your, a, a note would be one of these micro beats plus a half of one of those. Right. Okay. So, then, so that's, and then that's called a 64th. Yeah, 64th beat because if you broke all of those down, there would technically be 64 of them, 
So that would be takatemi, 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 takatemi. So yeah. when you start notating that and that you're trying to um, fill out the complete bar. So it, it's it's like doing a big equation when you're notating like that, because yeah. the, the program that you're working with tells you if, if that bar has got the right amount of um, notes in it, if it's got the right amount of yeah. me metric units. Mm. So you're kind of trying to figure That's out, you know, exactly how is that counted and it all has enough. to perfectly add up. Yeah. It's um, been quite a job, man, for you to do all this. Like, um, really, yeah. To, it took a while. I, I've never yeah. notated anything that difficult before. Mm -hmm. um, and what was, actually, I mean, the, the, the Tihai ones were fairly, they were fairly difficult, but to be honest, I, I used your formulas. I went back right. and watched the interview and then I yeah. said, right, well, well, he's telling me that it's, you know, takademi, takademi, and then rest one, two, takademi, takademi, rest one, two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's telling me this is the formula. So I'm going to, I'm going to type that in with my yeah, yeah. 16 and 30 seconds and dotted 30 seconds. Mm -hmm. And your, and your formulas were, they were just absolutely precise. I think, I mean, to, to really, uh, you know, t tell you guys one, tell you one thing that this one Tihai which we played, uh, which was the long Tihai where we, where we end uh, the, the Vilambit. That was the one which I think Gurdjieff had uh, had taught me, isn't it? Gurdjieff. Da 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 so I, I mean, I've been playing, and there are certain tihais which I think, um, depending on the ascending and descending of the raga and the number of notes you play, the tihais which you can play in uh, jog, you can't play in kafi or bageshri or you know other, because descending the number of notes are different, so you can't skip one note. So you also have to kind of see the kind of raga structure it is and then compose the tihais. So there were some tihais from traditional tihais which my teacher taught me, my Ustad Shahid Parvez, there's certain tihais which I'm the one definitely good then. And this one tihai which, uh, uh, you know, we've just kind of, I think just me and Gurden perhaps were uh, rehearsing for one of these blues concert and uh, we came up with something which was that was, I think we just kind of, so that, you know, these, the highs learn from different, different people from different, at different times, you know, so, and um, since the training is such that uh, it's, uh, uh, I, I, we, I usually don't fix anything. But I do sometimes fix longer tihais. So, so these longer tihais you can't attempt right then and there. You have to fix certain things. But before what happens before that is entirely on your, you know, your creativity and in what mood you're then. So, that's how it is. Yeah. So that one tihai, one tihai is good dance tihai. I must. Yeah. <laughs> Talking to you, good day, Nivel, sometimes I would say to you, oh, that, that solo that you played, you know, that, that was really, that was really special. Or, or I might say to you how um, I'm, I'm, I'm finding it difficult to remember Tihais. I'm, I, I can't decide what I'm going to play. You know, maybe this night wasn't, I couldn't remember them like I could the other night. And it, you surprised me because you said, well, half the time that I'm playing, I, I can't consciously control what I'm doing. But your tabla solos always sound they're kind of logically, they sound absolutely perfect. They've got a really um, a strong development and then the way that they end, you know. So how, how does that work for you in a performance situation? Um, I'd say that um, what tends to happen is that uh, as an Indian classical student, uh, the more experience we have performing, the more we want to uh, perform from within, you know, perform more emotionally and more uh, on the spur of the moment. And it takes some time to get into that sphere of performance. Uh, at the beginning, 
uh, I would say from my experience that I, and probably from a lot of students' experiences, is that a lot of the material we do, we, we have memorized our repertoire and we do want to present something that is like architected in such a way where it can present itself professionally. But um, what happens after some time is you start getting tired of your own expression because actually it's not really a live expression. It's sort of coming from your mind rather than from your heart. So I think over time, the more experience you have, the more you internally wish to surprise yourself mm. uh, and not sort of go, oh, okay, I have this stored in my memory bank. I have this variation comes after this variation. You know, this kind of sequence of events that we do. Ah, I did this movement. So usually I do this movement. So this is going to come up and this is going to come. These are the kind of natural things that happen when we, when we fall into a kind of habit or routine. So breaking that, can be a challenge but it's something that we're kind of more and more interested in doing mm. uh the more we perform it's kind of the, there's two voices in your head one is saying you have this whole thing sorted out because you've done this before and then there's another voice which is saying don't do that again because mm. you're bored of it you know and they're both kind of they're talking to each other these voices while you're playing literally while you're playing it's like just do this it's working it's fine and mm -hmm. the other the other voice is saying oh just throw something else in there and see what happens and usually that's the one nowadays for me that starts to win even if i feel <laughs> i have something set yeah. i'll i'll want to just even if i twist a particular phrase that will that will take me uh in an exploration down a different path uh and that can be interesting sometimes it can fall flat on its face um mm -hmm. But then the other, th the other part of our experience is that um, we learn a lot uh, about how to disguise errors. Uh, and, and that comes uh, a lot from having to perform for a learned audience that, that is literally like ready to criticize. That's like yeah. a huge, huge part of our classical music is that the audience is, you know, fundamentally there, there are people there who are like, it's like a judgment. You know, mm. so you want to be able to be creative and, and, and fresh and new while still making it seem as if everything is falling into place. So this, uh, yeah, this perfection or whatever, you, whatever you feel like calling it to me is, is not, is nothing, nothing like that. But uh, <laughs> it's probably the skill of trying to mold it into something that looks like it's, it's, it's right. Uh, mm. I know that, you know, Manish Bhai and myself uh, and, and, most Indian classical musicians, you, you listen to yourself in a concert and you will pretty much pick up 80% of what you pick up is I did this wrong. I did that wrong. This didn't, yeah. this, this movement didn't work right. Yeah. This, there was a delay here. The creative thought process stopped here. This, the hive fell on its face, etc. Mm -hmm. But, um, yeah, so that's the perspective of a naturally self-critical musician. Yeah, <laughs> um, true. It's true. always working on trying to build what they can't do yeah i mean yeah. certain times which i've also realized that you do i mean in this concert when i was watching this recording of the entire concert i mean we kind of had the pieces uh, where we just did the highs i mean because you we were analyzing this episode is more you know this one episode was more about the highs but the places when i was watching the other day the entire uh, youtube uh, video of this concert and i realized that while doing something extempore i mean just wanted to do there and you do a mistake mm -hmm. You try to kind of take that mistake and develop it more. Yeah. If you rely, you know, I mean, you pick that mistake and you try to kind of just work around that and make it sound as if it's deliberately exactly, done. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. You yeah. make the mistake done. your friend almost. It's like, yes. Oh, that, that yeah. sounded yeah. nice. And that around. is that is there's a lot of fun more much more than fixing yeah. a high and coming on some bang on. So yeah. So this was. Uh, and this is something which uh, I, I think you noticed in some of my playings here and there that because you can't really calculate all the tihais. There's certain tihais which you have to calculate, like if which are intricate tihais like these tihais I have to kind of have it in my mind. But a lot of times I, you know, just go with the flow. And you do a mistake, but you kind of try to really work around that and make sure that you develop that. We call it badhat. 
Badhat is the word which I'm sure a lot of musicians, uh, I mean, yeah, this, I just do pick up one note and do a badhat, which is like kind of try to improvise around that. So it, Badhat is like a badhat is like progression. Is like progression. I mean, take one note. If you say, say ra ne ne da re na da ra ta na so de na is getting. I'm doing the badhat of ra na pa ta ra ta ta na. So I'm just kind of doing developing that phrase from uh, different. Angles, and that's where actually you see the potential of an artist. That how much badhat can can he do on a certain thing? So I mean, I remember one of the in you know, one of the uh, uh, live concerts of Ustad Zakir Hussain. I think it was Abaji's Guru Purnima, his father Ustad Ali Khasab's Guru Purnima. And initially, for ten minutes, there was not much. I mean, he was trying his best, and uh, people of pretty cool i mean there's not much of an activity happening in the audience and while doing that he found one something which he realized that audience just went ah on that and he made that as a subject and pretty much the entire concert he played keeping that subject so yeah i'm sure gurudev must have seen one of the i think that uh, there's uh, i don't i forget the 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 content but it's it was done so wonderfully that that mistake became actually the center point the focal point of the entire concert yeah i did see one concert live in calcutta where uh he was uh, playing something which which he plays regularly uh and in the process he was playing a chand which he was going to expand into a rela and in the process of the chand i think as he was collecting powder or tuning or something one of mm. the phrases changed into a mm. different phrase mm. and it it definitely looked like a mistake but yeah. then he kind of the, even the way his eye wanders and then he kind of brought that mistake back in and he started mm. looping the mistake and it yeah. ended up mm. it was like ah okay i thought it was <laughs> going here and so did he that's the interesting part it's like you s- you can see the eyes of the performer yeah, where yeah, they yeah. feel and you can feel yeah. when they switch and how they switch and yeah. why yeah and then he switched yeah. into something which he, which I'd never heard before, which was a variant, yeah. and you could even sense the way he looked at the audience is he was kind of telling everybody with his with his face that, let's try this today. What do you think? And the mm. audience is smiling, which is kind of like, oh, this this looks interesting, yeah. and it yeah. developed into something even better. So in these cases, you know, uh, mistakes in the in the hands of maestros is, <laughs> is <laughs> something really to experience. So yeah. <laughs> Uh, talking about Jog, uh, uh, there is one concert of Shahid by I remember, Ustad Shahid Parvez. That uh, uh, usually I think I think it was Rupak or one of the Chandtaas, Rupak or Jhaptaal or one of the stars. And the the, the Mukhda, you know, the sign line, as you say, uh, it's usually da, 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 da. so it will like din, din, na, din, na, one, two, three, four, or five. That's usually, you know, these are the five notes which they. So by mistake, I was I was there in the green room, and I had a guitar with me. And he said, "Bajao, you want to play something?" So I was trying to play something, and instead of coming on one, two, uh, three, uh, four, five, I did like two, three, four, five. So that two became my one. And he said, "Ah, this is a nice point." And the entire concert, he tried to improvise playing like pin na. Tan tan tan. Ah, some what was that? Tin ne? Ta ke ta 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 ta. So instead of one, two, three, four, five, it is ta ke ta one, two, three, four. Something like that. Yeah. So that thing became that mistake was. I mean, he just loved it there. It was more like an and improvement in a way. More, like, more, yeah, yeah, it was, yeah. It comes on the off, which is yeah, yeah, interesting yeah. point. To yeah, 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 yeah. But, that's really interesting that that he was so open minded that you know his yeah, disciple yeah, yeah. plays it differently and then he says yeah, oh yeah. i'm going to i'm going to do that yeah, you know, yeah, yeah um that, that that's that's really that's very interesting to to me um because he's yeah. got such an incredible uh, wealth of material yeah, yeah. and yeah, you can yeah. see but that it kind of makes sense because that state of mind that's how you keep learning and you keep 
gathering all these things because you're always open. You're not, you know, you're not going to say, or rather he wouldn't be saying, well, no, Manish, that's not right. It can't be like that. Yeah. It has to be like yeah. this. He's actually just, his ears are open. Idea is to kind of see music in everything. Even a mistake could be a very musical. You know, I mean, sometimes a teacher sees that there are four students doing mistakes, but interestingly, they're all doing different mistakes. You know, <laughs> so it's it's amazing to see uh, these mistakes. And so they both, they all are creative in a different way because they are doing different mistakes, not the same mistakes. The thing that I really enjoy about, if I watch that concert again, um, I enjoy knowing that um, we never actually played those compositions together um, yeah. at all before <laughs> before yeah. we jumped on stage. It was just a yeah. case of sending each other a few WhatsApp messages. Yeah. And um, we, it, it was quite interesting because we, we had a concert the night before um, and we had no rehearsal. So you arrived in the UK, I think on the day of one concert. And then the next day we drove to Leeds from Bristol, which is about six hour, five, six hour drive to do another yeah. concert. So mm -hmm. we had to plan two concerts worth of material um, with no re rehearsal. So it was just a sense of um, just quickly try it in, well, in, sound, I, in, in sound check. And I, I really give, I think to me, in that case, I really have a lot of praise for you because uh, if we were going for a, or a jazz concert with some compositions, which you've been playing for ages, and, and I had to go there and kind of really pick it up instantly there or with hardly any time for preparation, it would have been extremely difficult. I think you've really, I think you're so drenched into it and so deeply rooted into it. Uh, you know, I, you know, we don't, not that you spend all, your all of your life doing that, but me for Gurdan, I mean for Gurdan, it's like the moment he knows, you don't even have to tell him that it's Rupak or it's Chapta or it's Tintal. It's one cycle and he knows. You know, and um, I kind of figured out, I just need a few minutes before the concert that, okay, I'm going to play this round. I just want to get into that mood. But for you to just go on stage and sit and do and do justice to that rag and join the Tihais as much as you could. And, you know, in the later concerts, you were so bang on in most of the Tihais because we perhaps got some time afterwards, but that was, I think, one of our, it's, I think a second concert of ours, you know, in that. We did one, the first one was um, April, 2018. And, and that yeah, was literally yeah. just like, we just went on, yeah. We just jumped yeah. in. I mean, we, we, we did meet, I think about two weeks before that, but yeah, this was yeah. the, but that was the first time I ever played. We had the rehearsal you. in the studio, I think. Yeah, that yeah, and one, that yeah. horrible tiny yeah. studio in London. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> so, so that, so then this one was kind of round two. But I mean, for for me, it was um, my whole mentality completely switched after that first concert um, because I was. Um, I was quite disappointed in, in, in myself. I mean, I, I was, I was so glad that the concert had happened. I was like, yeah. yes, because, because I, it was very difficult. We, we had problems with the organizers and I had to kind of, I, I, I ended up having to drive the PA there myself. Yeah. I remember that. Yeah. And I, and one thing I very strongly remember is the sunlight coming. You know, I remember when I sat to play, and I think I played Jinjoti or something, and there was this sunlight. It was seven in the evening, and or eight, eight in the evening or something, and I thought, okay, I'll play Jinjoti. And I'm, I'm still not very used to that, uh, you know, the time shift and the, the light. So suddenly you said, oh, eight o'clock, let's play Jinjoti. Oh, nine o'clock, let's play. And suddenly you realize that, you know, eight o'clock, it's still sunlight. And I remember this sunlight straight you know, coming onto on the stage or at least uh, in the hall. So it was <laughs> that mood. You need to get into that mood before you really. So yeah, and a lot of children around. That was a task. Yeah, it was. It was a bit of a family <laughs> thing because the people running yeah. it, um, they had they had a little. Um, they sort of turned their house into a temple and like a a, a school. So yeah, they, yeah. they were teaching dance and music and, and everything. So that's how I, I was introduced to them. And then they wanted to do a concert. And I said, well, you know, I could get these people together. So for me, it was really like, this is a chance to uh, just put a concert together because because I didn't, you know, I, I didn't have any real portfolio myself. I just had some recordings of me playing 
at, at home and but I could show portfolio of you guys but we didn't have any evidence of us as a trio yeah so I thought well we just need something just to get going um so I was glad that it it it, it came together but but looking back at it I was I was disappointed with I didn't think my sound was right I I, I just suddenly felt you know after the concert I really felt I, I need a lot more guidance because I'd met with Gordain a few times before, mm. um, just which was a bit, to be honest, Gordain, it was a bit terrifying for me in, in, in the beginning mm. because I thought, well, I, I don't know, I, I've just got to do this. I've just been, I've been practicing this stuff for years now. I know that I've got so much more to learn, but I just have to do this somehow. So I contacted you and, and I contacted both of you and I, I was amazed how, um, how open and kind of friendly you were. Um, so Gudain, you know, agreed for me to come to his house, and yeah. um, and I and I remember that first moment sitting down playing, thinking, oh, okay, this, I'll, I'll I'll play. I sort of know what I'm doing. Maybe this will be okay. And then about two two three seconds into playing, I suddenly thought, oh my god, this guy has played with like Anushka Shankar. He's played with Amjad Ali Khan. Like he's he's played with you know, so many amazing people, I must sound absolutely terrible. <laughs> and I got really, like, really nervous. Um, and then, but it was amazing because, Gudain, you gave me so much really constructive feedback. And then over about three different um, meetings with you, I felt I got a little bit more comfortable. Mm. But, um, but after the concert, I thought, okay, I really, really need to do something here. And so I asked you to put me in touch with, with Rupert. Mm -hmm. um, and then that was just a complete game changer. Um, yeah. So by that, so the transition from the first concert to the second concert, we, we, we had yeah. two in the second round, or well, four. Yeah. I had started using Chikari strings because yeah. I realized that straight away after that concert, it was like, I just, I need Chikari strings. Mm -hmm. um, I'd started learning from Rupa, um, so I actually had some real sense of how to practice properly mm, mm. Um, and how to kind of manage more of like an overall structure. And I also just changed my rig a bit and I had slightly different, a few different pedals and different amplifier, different guitar, um, not to massively change the sound, but just to make it feel like it would blend and feel a little bit more rounded and so for me, I, I, I completely changed my um, sort of, well, not completely, but uh, about 60, 70% of what I was doing, I, I sort of changed, mm. you know, to make it work. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, no, lovely. Yeah, no, you really improved in the first, I mean, I've, I, I kind of personally realized, uh, realized in the second tour that you really kind of improved quite a bit from from Leeds and then we did, uh, uh, you know, we did Rageshri in, uh, we did Rageshri in uh, Bristol, was that Bristol? Yeah, 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 the cube and yeah, so yeah. And also this uh, quick uh, uh, learning, I mean, you tell, you, you tell a composition and you're there, you write it down, ta -ta -ta -ta. you're like, you're amazing with, you know, writing down and just kind of quickly learning it and I think, Meanwhile, you were also going back home and taking care of your household work and I was like literally lying down next day You would come it's at two o'clock and come back with all, everything prepared. Yeah, so so yeah, that I was always I was quite astonished actually that um, uh, After the concert you had the same enthusiasm uh, That you had at the beginning of the concert like before the concert usually we yeah. We sort of think to ourselves, okay, before the concert, uh, we do this, we do this, we kind of have a pep talk, etc. And um, afterwards, uh, we're very used to just being like, yeah, it's done, cool, yeah. dinner, <laughs> kind of thing. Uh, and uh, you know, uh, we we realise that, yeah, I mean, Jack's really, really, really like he's he's going straight into the post concert review, uh, you know, feedback review. How did we do this? How did we do that? Listening to the clips and and. Yeah. It's it's not something that um, I think probably as a habit we just don't do it. We never we never saw it happening. We never really thought about doing it. But the fact that uh, I was kind of seeing this seeing this particularly from Jack initially it was like he needs to relax a bit. But um, <laughs> but the more the more I saw that uh, that process happen, I was really like it's 
it's a really good quality to have to be able to instantly go into uh what you've just done while it's while it's fresh and yeah and and and, and go for some sort of uh critical discovery etc at that stage so that then it, it has more of a an impact on change for for your for the next concert so i think that yeah. was the the enthusiasm yeah. and passion is something that i think manish and i both admire yeah, as really people admire. who have been in this for so yeah. long we uh you know i think manish many times has you know he he'd, he'd call me when when he, i think when you guys were in uh in bath practicing mm -hmm. Uh, you, I think he was there for for a week or so before, for example. Yeah, and I wasn't there yet, and and he would call and he'd say, "This guy practices so much." <laughs> he was like, he makes me feel conscious that I'm, you know, that, yeah. that 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 kind of there is a sense of inspiration there that that we feel that yeah. Also, despite, also, yeah. I remember in Bristol, I think when we played the Rajeshri, you were you were behind, and I said, you know. And I remember Shahid by mentioning, and I told one of the one of the things which Shahid by used to say that practice is all about hiding, performance is more about showing. Right. So right. and then and I saw you somewhere practicing in that corner, and I and I said, hey Jack, you practicing? He said, yeah, I'm hiding and practicing. You said <laughs> because you're hiding in one corner. <laughs> I remember at the yeah. back. I said, I just want to hide myself and practice. So just before the concert, you were warming up. But you were really hiding and doing it, so no one listens to you. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I uh, some you know, there was a musician I can't remember who it was, but she said that sometimes practice is not uh, not like a a nice thing to hear. Sometimes it's like cleaning yourself, like getting all the yeah, yeah. dirt off yeah. or something, because because yeah. a lot of um, practice needs to be. I mean, so, something which actually I found preparing with the concert preparing concerts with you um is that i it would be a very intense learning experience mm -hmm. and we uh, i'd be absorbing the different compositions and the rhythmic ideas that we'd be mm -hmm. doing and then kind of trying to cram it all in and hoping it would i'd remember it okay but something that i'd have to remember to do as well as that is just do plenty of the physical practice as well so mm -hmm. if we were going to spend, you know, a, a few a few hours just trying out different ideas, I mean, it's it's crazy how time flies by. I mean, I remember yeah. I had a I had a rehearsal with you Gudeng once and um, Balaji a mandolin. We spent about three hours working on a checkerdar, like yeah. but just we just did. constantly changing it. So you spend all this time, but but I I won't feel fully comfortable in the concert unless I've spent a lot of time just just doing all of the like like I have to just do that just because that's like just the cardiovascular you know it's like you, you can have your your brain can be processing all this stuff and in a huge expansion yeah. kind of phase but if you're not keeping just the the pure yeah you know reflex yeah. time like everything all the hand synchronization really together yeah. yeah um so sometimes even before concerts I haven't done that enough yeah, yeah, but so, even I go through that, you know, Jack. Uh, yeah. Even if, after all these experience, my thing has stopped again. Man. Anyway, so, mm. um, uh, so after all these experience, I've always realized that I have to struggle to produce to play subtle things, and yeah. it's not about speed. It's mm -hmm. never about the highs. It's never about dance. Those come pretty easy, but simple things like. Da 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 na, da da na da na, so na. There are five notes in this. Or da da na da, da da ga ma pa. These things come suddenly become because right initially you are like, firstly it's also slight. So you know the possibility of going off is more than a fretted instrument. Yeah. So you're always really conscious there. But uh, so I realized my warming up is not more about really warming up my hands. But mm. calming me down. Mm. Yeah. You know, and this somehow I have to make sure that I have to calm myself down. So either by deep breath or just kind of really talk slow. I started talking slower. You know, I had this habit of really saying more in less time. Mm. So, you know, just kind of relax, deep breath. And the deep breaths are nothing but chikaris. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, so your chikari is a deep breath and then you talk something and then you give a chikari and take a breath. Ah, yeah. yeah. So, so when you do that, when you do that, Sagama Pama Mama Gasa Pane Sagama Gasa Something like that. You know, so it's mm. basically you're relaxing with your breath. So that if you talk and you take like deep breath and then communicate, try to communicate and not rush, then it really works well. So more than warming up the hand and training the muscles, which you've been doing all your life. Mm. But, uh, uh, you know, so this, this lately, I mean, and especially when you're traveling a lot, I mean, you know that your concert is on the 21st and you have five days at home and you're going to do that. You try to convince yourself for five days, okay, relax, don't take pressure. Okay, no one's going to analyze you there, blah, blah, blah. But when you're <laughs> on the move every day, you lift it yeah. up and then you have to rush to other things. Mm. That's when you have to realize that you just slow down, slow down, slow down. And things fall in place. I don't, yeah. because I, have the tenden- I used to have tendency of rush. The moment you hear my speeding up, that speeding up, the times when I speed up because I'm restless. Mm-hmm. And even mm-hmm. today, even today, after all this while, and the days when this the music flows so beautiful. And the very few, actually, I'll be very honest, very few moments, few concerts in my life, which are memorable concerts, where I have thought that I've done the best and I've played what I usually play in this room when no one's around. Mm. Yeah, you know, the, the people have gone crazy and they said, oh, you're fantastic. And this is the next Jimi Hendrix of slide guitar and all that have happened. Many times this has happened. But the days when I feel that, oh, I was just sitting in my bedroom, there was no one around and I was playing and I actually played the same like that. So to reach that point is the journey yeah. from stage to my bedroom. <laughs> <You know? laughs> So yeah, so, yeah. That's just the way of way of looking at it. Yeah, that really. Yeah, that's that, that's that's beautiful. That, that's a. It's really interesting to hear the the different processes that the people that the, the people find. I mean, um, I mean, because to, to be honest, you know, it might appear to you that I practice a lot because before concerts, I I try to go into like a, a this mode, yeah. and 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 also guys a lot of my behavior around these things like going straight into analyzing a lot of that is like survival mode right. because i'm because i'm just part of me is just worried that i'm not going to i'm not going to succeed i'm not going to make it i i don't mean succeed i mean that i'm not going to be able to keep up you know mm-hmm. so so i'm this i'm in this like survival mode that like i really have to like make sure that i do well enough so before a concert i I feel great if I'm practicing, but if I'm not practicing, I start feeling really yeah. ag- agitated. Um, yeah. But usually my general life, you know, I, I spend a lot of time with, with, um, my, with my daughter and we do a lot of home education and um, yeah, she, she needs a lot of extra assistance. So I have to spend a lot of time doing that. And I've got to the point where for me to move things forward, I really need to do a lot of video Yep. Yeah. But it's got to the point where I, recently I only pick up the guitar to teach or to demo something for a video. Um, so when I talk about warming up and practice, it's like I, I find that I can keep myself together even if I, if I reduce my practice to actually very mechanical things. Mm-hmm. I can actually keep myself together even if I might only play maybe sometimes for just like, um, you know, maybe 10, 15 minutes practice. I might be teaching for two hours, but mm-hmm. I'm not, I'm, but I, I can't sit there in, in a lesson and be warming up that, because I wouldn't mm-hmm. be listening to them. But I found over the years that strategically I can keep myself in a fairly good uh, position. And actually my technique can gradually improve mm-hmm. if I keep returning back to these very mechanical things. But apart from that, I spend a lot of time just listening and mm. I always feel a bit guilty and anyway, a bit of guilty pleasure, but I spend quite a lot of time watching back videos of my, of our concerts or of performances mm. 
because mm-hmm. I want I want to be playing more than I can play. But for me, the closest yeah. thing to playing is listening or watching myself play. Yeah. Because yeah. in my mind, I'm 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 processing that I'm I'm remembering all of my stuff. You know. Yeah. And there's actually mm-hmm. re- research done that if um it was with a, a concert violinist. They got they were measuring brain activity while he was listening to a piece that he knows that he plays very well. And while he was listening to it, it was activating the same parts of his brain as when he's playing it. Wow. Yeah. So so if you're listening, watching things that are, you know, you know that other musician does that you, you understand how it's mm. done, or you're watching your own stuff, you're actually rerunning and processing those circuits. So I find that a lot of the musicality and phrasing and the different concepts to high concepts and things like that, I can kind of keep them quite fresh if I'm just kind of absorbing them throughout the day, you know, listening in the background or something. So my practice is often just reduced down to quite a kind of Spartan, you know, just drilling stuff because I don't often don't have time to actually just flesh out. Do you see what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, I know. I agree to that. Uh, it's it's also, I think, sometimes uh, uh, feeling that what would uh, I mean, who will be in the audience, and what how would they take it, and would they accept it, or will they, you know, whatever I do the best, will I be able to do it? That confidence, or uh, you know, there's a there's a very nice say a proverb in Hindi. Um, both you guys don't understand Hindi, but I'll explain that. It's it's a very simple one. It says, "Sabse bada rog kya kahenge log." Sabse bada rog means the biggest disease. And kya kahenge rog, uh, rog means what would, what would people say? The biggest disease a person has is to think, oh, what would people say if I play, if I'm not good? Mm. You know, you know, and you know, this analysis, why, and in India also, I mean, a lot of times I have, initial years, I have gone through that. And the times, I mean, I'm, I'm honest, you know, uh, that, a lot of times when you perform and you have audience who are musicians, they're a lot into analysis than enjoying. Yeah. 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 And, uh, and uh, so, the, so on, as an audience, as a, as a musician or as a student of music, when you're performing on stage and you know that there's a little restlessness, the first thing occurred to me is, occurs to me is, or oh, maybe I'm not like my music is not reaching there, or it's not making an impact, you know. And this this has happened over the years in, in the earlier days. So to get out of that and make sure that I don't care when I'm on the stage, I'm the king, and I'm going to do what I'm doing. Exactly. Mm. You know, this this to from here to there is such again a big journey yeah. to to. To not really care about people when it's you're a very on the psychological stage. Psychological thing. Very psychological thing, and that's what I think. You, I just always feel that your hands on any days were fine to me. I mean, you know, like any concert from the very first concert to the last concert, you there's certain uh, things in your hands which are fantastic, a little brilliant actually. What oh, you play with your left and right are really brilliant. It's just the mind state which mind. Uh, set of the mind state of your mind which really uh, and that's all because you want to give the best and you want people to like it yeah yeah, yeah. maximum yeah. and yeah. we should give a damn about that things after a point of time yeah mm. mentality can be a very paralyzing yeah thing yeah, but Gudan is uh, very good with you. Yeah. you're very good with that. I mean, I've seen really? uh, you. Yeah, yeah because uh, I've Disagree when I anyway. <laughs> <laughs> because uh, he, I think he doesn't really get much aff- affected by. I mean, I I heard your concert with Nayanda, and I was very impressed because I think that was the first time there was no rehearsal, nothing, no, nothing in the green room, mm-hmm. and you play. He played Bihag, and you played your solo. Oh and, yeah, you were there. Yeah, I was there. It was fantastic. Yeah. And that was like, I always feel that, okay, now he doesn't even know what Raj Nanda is going to play. He doesn't even know what, uh, uh, you know, Dal is going to play. Yeah. But he picked up and he was fantastic. It was really good. So he, he is pretty sorted, uh, pretty more spiritual high. He has yeah. more spiritually uh, grown than me and you, I guess. <laughs> yeah. And more experience, yeah. perhaps. Yeah. 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 I've, I've always really appreciated your, your, um, 
presence grenade you know so it's something very reassuring yeah. it's it's very reassuring to have you the accompaniment you give is one thing that Manish said to me is that great thing about Gordain, he only jumps in and plays along precise rhythm with something if he knows exactly what's going on. Mm -hmm. So you never jump in and don't quite synchronize. No, absolutely zero distance. Join, it's going to be perfect because you you've got that certainty of if you know yeah. it, if you know it, it's there. If you don't know it, you you know how to just yeah leave yeah, a that's... you know just play supportive. It's perfect. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so that's, that's, I mean, that's a very important because as a, as a accompanying artist, I would always prefer someone who's uh, firstly one with my music. I mean, I don't care how much is how fast and how clear he's playing. Mm -hmm. Is he with my music? Is he kind of really, you know, decorating my music or mm -hmm. adding an element to it? Instead? Because I have played with good musicians, good tabla players, very good tabla players. There are times when it's like, because you know my instrument is more about the slide. Uh, it's uh, the music is after I strike. Hmm. After I strike, what happens is the music comes after I strike. Yeah. And if you kind of going to fill something with your, uh, you know, some bowls of your tabla in between, I just I lose that. I, you know, for me it becomes very difficult. So Same. how much dir -dir 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 can you do on guitar? Because that's not the instrument which you know, really justi gives, justifies that uh, too much of speedy stuff. It's more about what happens after you strike. Yeah, so you, you, you need that space Yeah, that's why, that's why the Tihai, that's why the Tihai is, I mean, maybe next time when we meet, I, am, I think this lockdown period has been amazing with me because I'm really exploring more of the instrument and the playing, my playing has changed in the last few months because I've right. really Really, because I'm trying to more divert more towards the character of the instrument than trying to adapt saro, then sitar, which I did because my teachers were yeah. sitar players. And, yeah. you know, so it might sound these days when you listen to me, when you, I'm, I'm just saying, because I'm working on it, listen to me, it's just more of sliding tans, more right. of sliding the highs, and yeah. less of. So, you know, thanks to thanks to this lockdown period that we get got to, I mean, I mean, we went, it's been a crazy time, but, uh, mm. Cause but, I, cause but I would, a lot of learning. I would describe your style as quite, um, it's, it, it is quite vocal, you know, that there, there's a, cause someone was asking me, the student about how much of, um, how much is planned, you know, how in, in different musicians uh, improvisation. And I said, well, Manish, for example, you know, he's got his different kind of concepts and things that he knows, but there's quite, uh, there's something quite freewheeling yeah. about it as well in the way that, you know, often vocalists tend to sound a bit more freewheeling than maybe yeah. some instrumentalists because mm -hmm. the, the, the mm -hmm. voice is just, there's a, there's a spontaneity to the tans. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so I, mm -hmm. yeah. That's yeah. true. You're right. You're absolutely right. I mean, uh, fixing up too many things doesn't work for me. Yeah. You know, I mean, I wish I could uh, fix up things more and, and really work towards it, but it just, uh, my temperament also is like that. You know, I yeah, can't yeah. prepare, prepare things and go. I mean, I can't, I have to, I can fix certain things like the highs, for example. Yeah. Or for example, gut or format in general. Format. But I can't, yeah, but I can't fix a complete chanda. Mm. You know, yeah. I can't, and yeah. then after the second turn and turn number three and number four, so it doesn't yeah. work for me. Just the uh, and it just gives me more pressure, more yeah. tension. I think also um, when you the the more you fix the uh, the more that the aesthetic is reduced and yeah. the expression and is reduced because the possibility of going wrong becomes more because yeah. you fix yeah it. possibility of going wrong going becomes wrong. more. Yeah. Um, and the delivery becomes a little bit more kind of neutral. You yeah, know, yeah, there's, yeah. There's less yeah. less expression in that delivery. Yeah. So yeah. The, and the more the more the performance is like that, the more it doesn't connect. Yeah. On a on a, on a musical level as much, I think when yeah. we're when we're kind of trying to chase ourselves in the music, yeah. mm. the excitement is in the not knowing. Yeah, what you're true. You're to tell yourself. True. And that, yeah, what, and what that happiness feel in here, and that 
allows the you know the emotion to yeah. come out yeah 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 well guys that this has been fantastic um unfortunately i've got to bring it to a close but um yeah, yeah. It's been really fantastic to do this and just dive deeper. And, you know, these are the kind of conversations that we might have on a long car journey or something like that. You know, yeah, it's, yeah. it's been a while since we've yeah. you know, delved yeah, in. Really and yeah, so really, I, uh, yeah. I think we should, we should do this like once a month or something like that. But this has been amazing. Thanks so much for uh, Thank you guys. Thank you. No again. Yeah. yeah. Catch okay. you soon. Take care. Speak bye. to you soon. Okay. Yeah. Bye. bye. If you'd like to go all the way and access this whole course, it's available on Patreon as a gold patron, so you can subscribe monthly to access all of the videos. The whole course will be available as a one-off purchase by mid-December. I've actually had to delay the release of this course a few times because it's ended up being quite an endeavour with a lot of different stages to the production, so it's taken a bit longer to get the whole thing together. But I have been releasing it week by week on Patreon, and I'm glad to say all the videos are completed, so by mid-December it's all going to be available as a one-off purchase on my website, playleadguitar.net. Thanks very much for watching, and see you on another video.